Pocky is probably the most wanted Android phone of the entire year 2012. Samsung has delivered, so without any further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at the full review. So this is Samsung's flagship device worldwide, so it deserves flagship-worthy hardware, and it gets exactly that. On the inside of the United States version, we have a 1.5 GHz Snapdragon S4 dual-core processor and a huge 2 gigs of RAM. There's also a 4G radio inside, and it features expandable storage via microSD, all in a package that's just 8.6 millimeters thin. Up off all the spec sheet stuff, which is actually detailed here on the back of the boxes, you get software-wise Android 4.0.4 ice cream sandwich with the latest version of Samsung's TouchWiz UX on top. And we have some things to say about that too. The biggest new feature of them all, literally, is the new display. It's a 4.8 inch HD Super AMOLED display, so 1280 by 720, an absolutely gorgeous display for a phone. Is it pentile? Yes, but can you tell? Nope. I mean, this is a crystal clear, super high contrast display with amazing responsiveness thanks to what's underneath. A lot of people toss around the word pentile as if that means instant death to a display, but it's honestly, you really can't tell unless you're looking at a much lower resolution of a pentile display. First thing you notice when you're playing around with the Galaxy S3 is what I like to call fluidity, the smoothness of the user interface. When you're flying around TouchWiz, it's literally unmatched by any other Android phone. I've been playing with the One X for a while, the Galaxy Nexus for a while, but these animations here all execute at perfectly high frame rates, and that's not something I can say for every other Android device, and it just adds to that fluid experience. There's not a stutter anywhere. And this is the one reason why if I had to pick an Android skin over pure Android, it would be TouchWiz. I mean, it's the fastest, it's the lightest of them all. Couple that with the 2 gigs of RAM in the Galaxy S3, and you're looking at a pretty freaking fast device. TouchWiz is also one of the least obtrusive in-your-face Android skins that there are, so the user experience is pretty close to stock Android. There are a few minor changes, like the settings menu and that notification battery percentage indicator, Another thing is they replace the stock calendar widget and app with their own Samsung themed one, which is very different looking. And there are a few other pre-installed Samsung applications too, and depending on which carrier you go with in the United States, you'll get a few more pre-installed applications. One thing that I actually found a little bit annoying is that the toggles in the notification area, while they are really, really handy, and I'm glad that they're there, the slide-in animation that happens every time I pull down the notification tray like, is that really necessary? Uh, the Wi-Fi toggle is all the way on the left, and it slides in from the left, so that prevents me from being able to immediately toggle Wi-Fi, like, right when I pull it down. So it's just a little bit annoying, maybe just a minor complaint, I suppose, but something definitely worth mentioning. The toggles themselves are pretty much all really useful, and I'm really glad that they're part of TouchWiz. Definitely one of my favorite features. Now, that three-button layout at the bottom. Some people love it, some people really hate it, actually. Some people don't like the home button that's physical at all. Honestly, it really grew on me though, actually. After about five days of using the phone, I kind of like it. The, the soft buttons disappear when they're not in use. You know, they perform legacy functions, but they aren't there when you don't need them. So that's pretty cool. And you can access the multitasking still by long pressing that home button. So honestly, if you play with it and you don't like it at all, give it some time. You might actually find that you like it in the end. I like the lock screen though, which gives you the option to drag in apps to open them immediately. And it gives you the ability to pick which apps you have here. Nice touch. I always like the ability to open the camera quickly. And speaking of camera, the Galaxy S3 has an amazing camera. It blows the Galaxy Nexus's camera out of the water and impressed me more than the One X's shooter. I like saying shooter. <laughs> but it's an 8 megapixel shooter on the back. It takes 1080p video. It has sharp autofocus. It performs well in low light, which is great. It takes stunning pictures for a phone and is totally capable of replacing your point and shoot. Okay, you hear that? You no longer need to bring another camera on vacation or something. You can literally just bring your phone. I'm really happy it's gotten to this level of quality. The quality is great. The pictures and the features are plenty, and it's fast. It's really, really fast. There's a burst mode, which can take like 20 pictures in a couple of seconds. It's awesome. Very easy to use. Also, up front, there's a 1.9 megapixel front-facing camera for stuff like Google Plus Hangouts and Skype and Face Unlock. Nice. So is it a worthy flagship from Samsung? Uh, it really is. It's got the internals to support everything you throw at it from gaming to everyday use or to just heavy applications. The battery life you get out of this is more than acceptable. Again, miles better than the Galaxy Nexus. You can get all day out of this guy easily. 
and while the design may not be everyone's favorite, it, it feels fine in the hand. There's Gorilla Glass 2 on the front, the device itself is very thin, no need for a screen protector with that Gorilla Glass, and the removable back gives you access to the internals, the 2100 milliamp hour battery, the SIM card, the SD card, 